All right, guys, what's up? It's Ryan. I wanted to talk to you guys about sockeye salmon fishing on the Kenai River. Do sockeye salmon actually bite when they're in the river? When a sockeye salmon hits the fresh water, do they still feed? That's the question. You know, are, are they not feeding? So is there even any way you can get them to bite? So controversial. Nobody really wants to speak about it a whole lot, it seems. You know, if you ask the fishing game, they say that sockeye salmon quit biting when they hit the fresh water. And there's still this massive sockeye salmon fishery. Like, how could that be? Like, what's sport fishing if the fish doesn't bite? You're probably snagging. Well, how do they define snagging? So subjective. The idea is to hook the fish in the mouth whether they're biting or not. You wanna hook the fish in the mouth. How do you do that? How do you snag a fish in the mouth? Well, the sockeye salmon are swimming up river and with the current, they're gonna be swimming along like this with their mouth opening and closing as they're breathing. And the idea is to have a nice four foot long leader line and drift that line right into the sockeye's mouth and pull it tight and hook the fish in the side of the face or inside of the mouth. That's how the fishing game says that you legally fish for sockeye salmon. Now, lots of people say there's not a lot of sport in that because the fish isn't, isn't going to be striking and feeding. So I guess I'll just leave that up to you guys to decide like what's right, what's wrong there. But um, they, there's a massive fishery here on the Kenai River for sockeye salmon, and none of them are being caught in the mouth because the fish is feeding. So um, anyway, I wanted to show you guys how to rig up a simple leader just so you guys have some success while you're out there trying to snag a fish in the face. Um, you wanna take some leader line, you know, something 15, 17 pound test, something like that's gonna be just fine. I like to work with about a four foot piece of leader line like this and to your fishing rod, uh, to the live end of your rod, you're going to tie a swivel on. And out the bottom side of the swivel, um, you'll actually tie your leader onto it. So in the bottom loop part right here, we're just gonna do a simple barrel knot, pull that guy through, twist this five times around, like so. Put the line through that loop and pull it back through itself. There's lots of tutorials on how to tie this knot, but basically you want that thing to slide all the way down and get tight, just like that. And you have your line set up. Now, what I like to do is take this little tiny tail right here, and I'm just gonna clip my split shots right onto that. You know, um, it's kind of nice because they won't slide up and down your leader. Um, some people like to crimp it right on their leader and then they'll get snagged on the bottom and they'll pull on it and then their, their lead will slide up and down their leader and they'll find that they're inconsistent with their success. So I'm just gonna take this little, uh, this little dead tail right here. I'm gonna just clip these guys on right here. And if they slide off, they slide off. At least I know that my line isn't gonna be compromised because of these being crimped directly onto the live line. So we'll just go ahead and put these on like this. All right, so now we have a couple of split shots hooked onto that swivel, just like so. And then we're gonna run down to the end of our leader line. This is where your hook's gonna go. And you're gonna fish with like a number three, four, five, you know, it just depends on what style J hook you wanna use. Um, anything like this will work just fine. You just need to remember if you're using a bare hook, you need to be using a bead or a piece of yarn. Um, today I'm gonna be showing you how to use a piece of yarn. And it does help. Um, sometimes the yarn will get stuck in the fish's teeth or it'll increase your chances of uh, success because the yarn is actually gonna sink at a different rate than like say a bead would, or um, you know, if you were to 
hook your yarn onto the end of this hook right here and have it drifting in the water, it's gonna make this hook do funny things. So let me show you how to actually fasten a piece of yarn to a hook. Um, what we need to do is tie an egg loop onto this hook with our leader line. We'll go down through the top, pull out just enough line to complete the knot. We fold it back on itself like so, and then we wrap it down the shank of the hook like this. What we want to do is create a little egg loop. We're going to flip this through there just like so, and then we're going to slide this barrel up tight like this. Now we have a barrel right here that slides up and down the shank of that hook with that tail just kind of hanging off. But what you can do is pull that out like that and you take your piece of yarn and you can just go ahead and slide your yarn in just like so and then pull that thing up tight. Now, when that gets wet, it's gonna ride right down the back of your hook like that and you're gonna be successful with the way that floats through the water. It's important to have that line come out of the hook eye like that because you want a nice straight pull through the, through the water. So that right there is gonna be our basic setup. You have your swivel, a couple of weights. You can use any kind you want. I choose to use split shots on the dead end right there. And then all the way up to your hook, like so. This is the key part of using a setup like this when you're flipping for reds. The idea is to create a trap in between your weight and your hook. That trap is this leader line. Now, ideally, the, the weight and the hook are gonna fall in the water at the same exact rate. You want your weights to fall with your hook straight so that line is running parallel to the surface of the water and the, the surface of the actual bottom of the riverbed. So the line is, is dropping straight like this. What that does is it creates a much larger area for the salmon to actually swim into that leader line. And then once that, sam once that line's falling through the water like that, that salmon that's swimming by breathing like this, it's gonna get that line stuck in its mouth and you're gonna feel that. And as the fish is swimming up river, it's gonna pull that line right into its mouth just like that. And that's how you're gonna successfully, consistently catch sockeye salmon. Um, there's, there's so many ways to do this, but if you guys rig up this way, give it a try flipping this out there. And I'll show you how to do that method too, the actual flip itself. But the rig up is important because you guys wanna make sure that every single time your, your leader hits the water, it's falling in the water the exact same way. This is gonna incre increase consistency and it's all about having your, your hook in the water um, in order to catch a fish. So any fisherman knows that, but I'll, I'll show you guys how to use this here in just a minute. Look at, look at how consistent this guy is at flipping. Over and over and over and over and over. All about consistency. He's got that same exact leader on there. Everyone in the river is doing the same exact method. Those fish are swimming upriver. And you just flip over and over and over. And as those fish are swimming by, breathing with their mouths opening and closing, He's just simply sitting there trying to flip that leader line out there and pull it right into the fish's mouth. Now, you know, maybe if he waited a little bit longer, he would find more success as the fish might be a little bit deeper. He's just gonna sit here and flip over and over and over. It's all about consistency. Notice he doesn't change anything. It's the same pull. And that's how it's done. I mean, these guys obviously know what they're doing. I mean, look at this place. Look how many fish they have. There's just piles of them, piles of fish everywhere. These guys are on it. And we're talking about like, not just one person, two people, three people. There's people, there's so many people up and down this river. She like watch these fish come in.
this. Alright. 